YouTube land and welcome to the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast episode 19. Of course, I am one of your hosts, Dantes, and joining me, like always, the man, the legend, and the Splatfest king of the werewolves, Caliones. How you doing, Caliones? Hey, how you doing, Dantes? How you doing, everybody? And... Yeah, wow, we in another week and, and another getting again on Nintendo podcast. So this is episode 19 and PS we Xbox we try to do our best to be on time. So yeah, we we're, we're doing better. Uh you know, lately we have been able to like uh you know, start it on time or, or close to it. So we have been doing a better job, uh, especially since we pretty much set up everything at 9:30 uh from now on so we don't get, you know, confused or anything, but uh we I'm ready to go. I do want to get to a couple of news uh that are very important. And I need to talk about but Dantes. Go ahead and take it away. So, uh, Galeones, classic question. What have you been playing? And of course, a lot of people will notice that Galeones this week has been playing a lot of Splatfest with the people. Uh, where Galeones today got to Werewolf King during Splatfest. Galeones, any other games you've been playing? Uh, no. Uh, well, the first thing I did was get my Splatfest shirt. I was playing throughout the week, making sure I maxed it out and, and got the highest level on it and now uh, leveled up to king. So the important thing about this is that I will be able to get the maximum amount, you know, win or lose, uh, of Super C snails. And with those, uh, I can re-roll abilities and I can try to make it all about speed, like I always say. So so I'm pretty excited about, I guess, uh, you know, like three or four hours after the uh, Splatfest ends is when we get the... Uh, uh, the results, and that's when I'll be able to get the Super C snails and see how many I got. Uh, very excited about it, and but yes, that's been consuming my time throughout the week. Okay, sorry, I'm just moving so I can see the health of the string, making sure that we don't have any kind of technical issues. Uh, for me, Calionis, I've been playing some Switch games, even though they're not out on the Switch. <laughs> what I mean with that is, I platted uh, Batman, the Telltale game. Uh, which will be on the Switch. Well, which will be on the Switch. That's why I made that joke. And it's mm -hmm. a f fucking great game, Calionis. Like, the story got me invested. Uh, I, I admittedly, I kind of miss that this story would have been added to, like, a Batman Arkham type of gameplay. And with a Telltale game, it's just, you know, it's just, you know, just making choices. And there's, there's you know, there's not much gameplay. Your choices is the gameplay, right? But I will say that uh, that I, I was invested, and they changed some of the characters and the methods of Batman that I was really surprised. Like, normally I would act it around those characters differently from what I know of Batman, but they switched it around, and they, they, they fuck with your brain, to be honest. I mean, mess. Sorry, I, I'm trying to be PG. I forgot. Sorry about that. So they mess with your brain, and, uh, and a great game. Like I said on one of your streams, I would give it a 9. Switch owners, when that game comes out, I would recommend that you buy it. The second game that I started to play was Rhyme. Uh, Rhyme, again, is also coming on the Switch in November. Coming on the Switch. November, yep. And it's it's kind of like a wide open game. They drop you off and there's nothing. They don't tell you anything. You have to figure it out yourself. Uh, so it's interesting. Uh, I, I'm still in Chapter 1. Uh, there's a couple of times that I got lost because, again... The game is so it's open. It's just they just drop you and you don't know shit. So so I did spend yesterday still on chapter one. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so I'm hoping to keep playing. I still don't have a judgment for that game, but uh, it seems like a promising game, and uh, and the graphics are good looking, and I like the artistic uh, 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 direction of the game. So again, I think it will be a good game once it comes out of the Switch, and I, I would recommend it. But again, not yeah. yet there. Let me play a little but, bit more, and I'll give but you. But no, like. But I know, like people haven't been really posted it on the comment section. But the big question is, when are you planning on playing Battle Chasers Night War? When are you gonna play that game? <laughs> uh, that one, it's not even on my um, on my schedule right now, Kalia. <laughs> like, like I'm trying to get a couple of plats before uh, October 27 because after that, yes. it's all Nintendo all the time up the butt. I mean, up the butt cheeks because. And uh, uh, yep. it, after that is Mario and then Xenoblade Chronicles. So it's, the Switch is going to take all my time after yeah, that. Yeah, and tell us what other game you're going to be playing because you just told me uh, a little while ago that you pre order another game on Best Buy. So what game was that? Uh, I did pre order Skyrim. Uh, I want to give it a shot. I think that's a good game to have on the Switch 
because again, it's a game like I'm treating Mario and Rabbits here. I don't I don't play it all the time. I just play it when I'm traveling or you know outside the house and stuff. I'm, I'm like killing time. So this could be a good game. I'll do that. I don't think I'm going to dedicate time. Like, I'm going to dedicate to Mario Odyssey and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But I think it's going to be like a game. Oh, there's, I have 30 minutes, you know, waiting, uh, I don't know, a lunch break at work. Let me play a little bit of Skyrim, right? So uh, I think that's going to be a good game to have there. But, yeah, I did reserve it. Anyway, Caliones, with all that, let's do a rigmarole, baby. I want to thank everybody for joining us today at the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast, episode 19, every Saturday, 9.30 Eastern Time. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make these two crazy MFs happy. Also, please remember, if you don't want to see your ugly faces, it's all good, my friend. I got a solution for you. Go to SoundCloud and iTunes and download this podcast for free. Rate us over there so you can show us some love. Also, we do have a small Facebook page called at Voice in Unison Gaming. Also, all our channel schedule is located in the description box below. And finally, and Dante says finally, go to ChigueroSnews.com and give some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, Caliones, are you ready? I said. Are you ready? ready? So for the no one in attendance and the eight people watching around the world, let's get ready for Reggie's News Center. I'm just doing it with a little bit of Halloween because it's Halloween time. My, my, body, ready, my body is ready. Go take it away, Calionis. And starting with the first piece of news and the one that has been casting, I mean, causing a stir. So a lot of you know, different reactions and things like that, but something that should not be unexpected. And it is that Edge magazine has given Super Mario Odyssey a perfect 10 out of 10. So this makes it the second Nintendo Switch game to receive a perfect 10 from Edge magazine. And even though you would think, oh, okay, so second game that receives a 10, Edge they keep handing out tens like candy. No, that's not the case. The magazine has been out for over 20 years, and this is only the 20th game ever from the magazine to receive a perfect 10. So what does that tell you? What you already knew, which is you got to pick up the game. So Mario Odyssey, perfect 10 out of 10, second Nintendo Twist title, and this makes it even more complicated to see which game will be the game of the year. So what do you think about this, Dantes? Uh, I think, uh, I think it's going to get a lot of 10s. This is not only going to be the first or the last 10. I think this game, uh, if I would bet, I would say that, uh, Mario Odyssey is going to get high 94, um, uh, Metacr Metacritic. I think that's going to be, what, what was it? Uh, um, um, Breath of the, of the Wild. What was the Metacritic score? Uh, well, it, it ended up with a 97 thanks to Jim Sterling, but I already <laughs> made my peace with Jim, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to say anything else other than that. I, I really do appreciate all the things that he's done, but yes, it, it is a 97. You know, Jim Sterling gave a good review of Breath of the Wild. I'm sorry. It's just highlighted, yeah, yeah, no. it's highlighted yeah, yeah. the defects that the game has. No game is perfect, right? So uh, No, but I mean, he, he just needed to see the game with like fanboy glasses, so he could have given it a higher score. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so if, 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 if uh, Breath of the Wild had a 96, six, you said, or 7? 97. Uh... Okay, so oof. I guess yeah, so, Mario Odyssey yeah, I mean, would end up with the same Metacritic score, in my opinion. I don't know what what well, is your your prediction, Calionis? Where the Metacritic score is gonna is gonna end up? Well, I mean, like I mean, Edge Magazine is it's always a pretty good indicator on how the game is is gonna score. I believe it uh, it did score a forty out of forty of, on, on Famitsu, but the I mean it hasn't been published yet, so it's not official. But uh, I mean, seeing a ten from Edge, I think it's gonna be at least at the very least a ninety five. Um, the highest rated games ever, I know two of the three, I know one of them is Rent of Auto 5, the other one is uh, Ocarina of Time, uh, they have 98s, uh, I forgot the third one, uh, which one it is, so if somebody in the comment section or somebody else can help me out, uh, but there um, are three games uh, that scored a 98, uh, but yeah, Mario, I think it should be at least a 95, 
Uh, I think it's going to be difficult with so many reviewers out there um, that you know for the game to score 98. But it, it is up to a good start. So I, I mean, to a good start. So I'll say at least at 95. So I will say this: if there's one game that I'm really pumped for this fall, it is Mario Odyssey. I haven't been pumped so much for a Mario game in a long time, and the reason for this yes. is. To me, this is the first real 3D Mario game. I don't, I don't count Mario 3D World as a real Mario 3D game. A fun game. I enjoyed the game, but it's just compared to Galaxy was like, you know what I'm saying? So, so Galaxy 2 was, it's to me, one of the greatest games of all time. I'll put it on my top three games of all time. That's how high regard I have for Mario Galaxy 2. So that's why I'm so pumped because this game feels that it's going to have the same creativity and the same fun and gameplay type that Mar uh, Mario Galaxy 2 had. So I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. And, and I am not surprised that Edge g gave it a 10. I think it's it's a it's gonna deserve those scores. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm ready. I'm ready to play it. That's the only thing I'm going to say. Uh, do you want to? Yeah. Do you want to continue over and going over to the next piece of news? So uh, yeah, it is the, the Nintendo Switch sold 38,000 uh, systems this week in Japan, uh, alongside the Nintendo 3DS, we sold an additional 20, uh, 23,000. So uh, this marked the release of Mario and Luigi uh, Superstar Saga. So you know that came out. Uh, it was in first place with 25,000 copies sold. Uh, Splatoon 2 still second place with 22,000, and you know. Uh, it's, uh, the game's already over um, 1.2 million copies sold, physical copies in Japan. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe climbing over to number three with 13,000. Uh, FIFA 18, number four, uh, that was a PS4 version. And uh, Legend of Heroes, Tri you know, Trails of Cold Steel 3, uh, number five. So you have Pokemon Tournament, number six. Uh, Fire Emblem Warriors, number nine. And Zelda again sold an additional six thousand one hundred ninety-six copies. So it's over. It sold over six hundred thousand copies in Japan. You know, really great numbers uh, with the, uh, the Nintendo Switch games on here. So it continues to sell really strong. There was a dip uh, from the previous week when it comes to uh, Nintendo systems, but uh, you have to understand Super Mario Odyssey is going to be coming out in two weeks, and you know that they're holding some of those systems for the Super Mario Odyssey bundles as well as having more. Uh, systems available for, you know, for when the people go to the store to buy the game. So uh, how do you feel about the sales? Uh, I mean, good sales. I'm not, I don't have big, big things to say. I mean, we put Japan numbers once in a while. Uh, the good part of Japan is they do give you full numbers. I wish that yes. the U.S. Would, would do that too. So, I mean, good numbers. I, I think I think we can move on. I think, I think like you say, Mario Odyssey is coming. That's going to give good sales numbers. And then, of course, Inoblade in Japan, hopefully, to me, hopefully, will we'll sell good numbers too. But we'll see. And I know uh, we were talking about how great the Nintendo Switch sold, but it actually doesn't even compare to how many units the Super Famicom Mini sold in Japan, which... Yeah, Super Famicom Mini, to, uh, to those that don't know, it is the uh, the Super NES Classic Edition. Uh, that's how it's known in the U.S., uh, Famicom, uh, which is the, uh, the family computer. Uh, it's uh, how it's known in Japan, but it sold 368,000 units during its launch week. Uh, that's crazy, it's, and it seems like it sold out completely. And if they had more, they would be able to sell even more of those, but... Uh, this time, it seems like Nintendo will be producing a good amount of them, and they will be coming out regularly. So uh, you do have a much better chance to getting it rather than uh, like you know like uh, it happened with the NES Mini, where a lot of people were left out. But the uh, the NES Mini, uh, as a reminder, it will be coming back in the summer of 2018. So you'll have another chance of grabbing the NES Mini. But yes, the Super Famicom Mini sold 368,000 copies in japan this week so that's uh, an amazing job what do you think dantes uh no i mean it's, <laughs> it's I, I mean uh, nintendo's gonna keep making these things like i said i truly believe that this is your new virtual console <laughs> you're not gonna get a virtual console on the switch they're better off just selling the super nes meeting mini over and over again right so uh so we'll see what happens there's rumors already that they're gonna build a, uh, a Game Boy Mini already, or a Game Boy Portable, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, I think that's the next console. Uh, I, I was looking into to see if there was an N64 clone console that would be with HD output. There's none. Uh, I have the Retron 5, which I love. 
and gives me HD output for all games, but there's not an N64 HD output, right? It's a clone console out there. So the N64 Mini could be the first one, and you could see those games in HD. That could be an attractive proposition, even for me so more so because uh, yeah. I do have a Retron 5, so the Super NES Mini and the NES Mini is not as attractive to me, but having N64 games in HD... That could be a good proposition, but we'll see. I think the Game Boy Mini is the next one. Yeah, and I mean that's uh, we should do one of those um, uh, videos about what games we think uh, are going to be included on the N64 because uh, when it comes to the Nintendo 64, the uh, the library of Nintendo only games is so strong that Nintendo probably don't won't even need third party games to be included in there, especially since you know uh, some of the great library from the system like the uh, the rare games um, might not be something that's you know that, that'll be possible to have it on there. But with Nintendo only games, uh, the lineup is going to be really, really strong. So uh, we'll we'll see how that goes. But uh, moving on to the next piece of news, uh, we have the well, France. Now they actually uh, published and stated that the Nintendo Switch has sold almost four hundred thousand units uh, in France. So France, uh, you know, in it's a little different different than UK. UK is mostly like a like a Sony PlayStation country. France is, is a Nintendo country, so Nintendo dominates when it comes to France. And they said, uh, um, uh, you know, over three hundred ninety thousand units, almost four hundred thousand they've already sold. And out of those four hundred thousand people that have bought Nintendo Switch systems, eighty percent of them have gotten let you know sell their Breath of the Wild for this system. So that's uh, basically an 80% attachment rate when it comes to that game. Uh, so that, you know, extremely great attachment rate. So can you imagine that if when Nintendo ends up selling 100 million Switch systems and 75% of them buy the you know, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, that'll put it as one of the, you know, probably the, one of the top 10 selling games of all time if it were to happen. But uh, are you impressed with the sales numbers? Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about sell, num sell numbers all the time. I think the Switch could hit that uh, uh, Nintendo goal, right? Uh, I think they wanted to ship 20 million consoles before uh, the end of this year or ne or early next year or end of the physical year. So that would be yes. March of next year, right? So uh, so they could hit that. I mean, uh, it's selling, and I, I see it. I see the excitement on the Switch. Uh, like I said, I love the system. I do have a love-hate relationship with Nintendo because there's some features that I want them to add it as soon as possible, but... Uh, but it is a great console, and it, it is just great to have those type of AAA game experiences on the go. Nintendo is honestly fulfilling the promise that the Vita had, right? So yes. I, I, that's pure and simple, and I think that's good sales numbers. Yeah. So yeah, uh, moving on to the next piece of news, and this is coming from Forbes Japan, is that Nintendo has been ranked as the fourth most trusted company uh, over there. So you have... Uh, companies like Siemens, uh, like Michelin Group, and Alphabet, aka Google. So, you know, the parent company of Google, but uh, they are uh, the four most trusted companies. Yep, uh, Nintendo coming up over at Ford. That tells you that uh, the same thing we've always known. Like, when it comes to Nintendo systems, uh, they're very durable. They last a long time. Uh, you don't have to worry about the other system designs or anything else. Uh, or anything else. Also, you don't have to worry about the quality of the games uh, from Nintendo. So they are always of the highest quality. Even if it's a mediocre game, you can make sure that they're not going to be full of bugs and, and things like that. Uh, so as a company, Nintendo, even though they have been uh, taking care of their, you know, their IPs, uh, be it with the, the whole, you know, YouTube and, you know, banning the live streams and things like that. But at the same time, uh, Japan trusts them because they are very careful, clean, and they're a very family-oriented company. So, um, so what do you think about the ranking for Nintendo, Dantes? Uh, no, I mean Nintendo has been doing the right moves. You have to be trusted. Their their uh, shares are keep going high and high. Uh, so I mean it's it's a a, a good bet right now. Uh, the Switch, I think, surprised a lot of investors. A lot of people were calling gloom and doom and the end of the big N. But you know, it's it's. Nintendo is like Jason. You kill him 20 million times and he always comes back out of the grave to kill you, motherfucker. I mean, to kill you, MF. So, uh, uh, good. I think I think Nintendo is doing really well. Yeah. So, uh, moving along, uh, we have Nico uh, 
or Nyko, well, Nico, Nyko, um, I don't know how to pronounce it on this one, but they ha are going to be releasing, or re they have released a portable docking kit uh, for the Nintendo Switch, as well as a boost pack uh, for the battery. So when it comes to the uh, the kit, uh, it does have, uh, you know, the, you can dock the, uh, the system on there, uh, much easier to carry around and use it. It does have uh, three USB adapters. Uh, it has a HDMI cable included, as well as the uh, the AC adapter uh, to the Type C. So uh, that's going to be included with it, and it retails for forty nine ninety nine, which is a lot less than uh, the dock, yep. which I believe is something uh, in between eighty or ninety dollars uh, yep. retail. Yep, this uh, this this, from Nintendo. this thing this thing is interesting. That's why I put it in the news today, Caliones, because I'm, I'll wait for the reviews. But this could be a good solution for people who want to add more docks around the house and for people who want to take it you know with them to their business trips or whatever to their trips or, or you know whatever uh, i did take my dock when i went on my last business trip and the dock wasn't bad i think it was small enough i could carry it with my backpack no issues at all but this is even smaller right so uh, I, I think it's a good solution we'll wait for the reviews to see if it really delivers on the promise but Nintendo, pay attention. I mean, I know it's an official licensed product, but you should be doing something like that. You're, you're charging too much for your dock, for the official dock. That's too much money, Nintendo, really. Come on. You can, yeah. you can do better than that. I mean, if, if you are to you know, compare with uh, the, the products from other companies, it's more or less uh, around the same price. But you know, Nintendo should know uh, the docking station is something that a lot of people might want to get three, four, five of them. So even if you, if you have only one Nintendo Switch, you might have three or four different you know, TVs around the house. Uh, I personally have four different TVs, uh, and I have two Nintendo Switches, so I have two docks that I can uh, play with, but I still may miss like two more. Um, yeah, I want to give a quick, quick shout out to Spoon. Uh, thanks for joining in, and thanks for helping last night with the, uh, the Splat Fest and leveling up. Um, you know, do appreciate you, uh, you know, like joining. But, but yeah, as far as the docking station, uh, that's something that a lot of people will buy more of them. Like you said, even have spares for when you're traveling and, and all of that. So Nintendo, um, I do like your dock. Uh, the thing I do like about it is that the, the screen itself is covered and protected. But also when the dock like this one, you kind of want to like show, you know, showcase the Nintendo Switch by having it, you know, with the screen out and people seeing it. So it, this is a really good alternative. It is like at least, at the very least, $30 cheaper and it comes included with everything. So... It's a really great alternative. It says that you know, it's available at Walmart and also at their website. So if you want to, I mean, just you know, take a look and see what it is. Uh, yeah, go to Nico.com or Walmart and, and look it up on there as well as and game stuff as well. Yeah, uh, they're going to be so, having uh, it. PS, we Xbox C, if you are planning, I know, I don't think you have a Switch, but if you plan to buy a Switch and you think the dock is expensive, this Nico solution could be great. Same for Spoon. Again, a lot of people have different, a lot of TVs around the house. And if you travel, this this is a great solution. Anyway, go ahead, Kalyan. Okay, so uh, this is another uh, article. It was on Nintendo basically uh, talking about what they learned from the launch of the Wii U and how they put it on, uh, you know, how they applied it to the Switch. So just reading the quotes, um, they said, when you're coming off the launch of the Wii U system and then your next hardware system is Switch, it's a challenge to know how many we should be ordering. What is the demand going to be? So basically... Uh, this is why um, you know some of the people have been complaining uh, about the Switch being in short supply. They're doing much better now. So if you go to the store, chances are that you might be running into one and be able to purchase it. But uh, the Switch has been in short supply because when the Wii U came out, Nintendo produced 20 million of them. They already had 20 million of them produced and ready to go from, uh, from day one. And they were expecting to sell all of them because the Wii sold over 100 million consoles. Uh, with this Nintendo Switch, uh, they did not produce that many because they were burned by the Wii U. They they produced 20 million of them, but only sold a little over 13 million. So they had an additional 16 something million. Uh, well, actually, not 16 something. I'm sorry, like over six million of them just sitting on the shelves and you know basically wasting away. So I believe, I'm pretty sure Nintendo's just using them for parts now. But <laughs> that's why they decided not to invest. Too, you know, so much on the Switch because even though they had a really good product, they didn't know about the reception that it was going to get. So, um, you know, they also said that 
Uh, if you look at the well, Wii U hardware, just the system menu itself, yeah, the, the time that it took to boost the system model to get into gameplay was something that was a frustration for a lot of players early on and actually became a hindrance. With Switch being something that you take with you, it made it really important that you could play it instantly. That to me is an example of a direct lesson from the Wii U era when Nintendo said that's something we're going to zero in on making a dramatic improvement on. So um, that's another, uh, they're talking about the... Um, uh, well, the, the operating system, uh, one of the reasons why I feel like uh, they have been more so concentrating on games and not adding applications. And Nintendo wants to make sure that once they add those applications like your Netflix, your Hulu, your YouTubes, that this operating system is not going to become slower. Uh, it is, um, uh, out of all the major consoles, by far the one that loads the faster, uh, be it turning it on or loading the games. And I, that's really important for Nintendo. So, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and yeah, leave it at this. But what 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 do you have to say about this, Dantes? So, do did Nintendo learn from the Wii U era? I think they did, but I don't think the fast OS is the reason why they're doing so well. So uh, that portion of the article, I was like, really, guys? I, I if you're saying that, I don't think Nintendo learned anything. Uh, I think what Nintendo learned, the biggest lessons that they took was promote the damn thing. So, like, the Wii U, they thought that with just because it had the Wii name, it was going to sell Gun Busters. And they did not promote the system well, aside that they gave a shitty name, too. I mean, the, the name was just, just bad. I think was, to me, if you ask me what is the worst name Nintendo console, I'm going to tell you the Wii U. Uh, so that didn't help. But you see it. In this console, they came out of the gate promoting the console the right way. They gave you that, uh, you know, uh, tease trailer early around October of last year. They're like, look what we have here. Look at our, our concept. And people were like, hmm, shit, that looks really interesting. And then they went, boom, let's do our presentation, official presentation. And then they show some games that no one expected. Like, again, for me. I did not expect Xenoblade Chronicles 2 so soon after X just released a couple of years ago, right? Uh, and then Mario Odyssey and, you know, all the good games that have come out this year for, for the system. Uh, Splatoon 2, like X, Y, and Z. And then they put uh, a commercial during the Super Bowl. That's when you saw that Nintendo was serious about this system. And people know that the Switch exists. If you ask people, uh, I'm talking about casuals, If the, what is the Wii U? A lot of people thought it was just an extension controller for the Wii. People know what is the Switch. People understand what is the Switch. And that was the key for the success of the Switch. Yes, and, uh, and it also helps that the Nintendo Switch is uh, a concept that you can easily understand. So uh, it is easily to describe. You can see a simple commercial uh, and you know what it is, what it does. Uh, so it's a very easy sell. Uh, with the first time that you saw the Wii U gamepad, like you said, people were scratching their heads thinking, okay, so is it an add-on? Is it a new console? What, what, what the heck is it? And that's why a lot of people, and you know, the Wii U was bought uh, for the most part by casuals. And those are the people that unless they understand the concept of what it is, they're not going to go out there and pick it up. Uh, the Switch is a really easy sell. Uh, it is an amazing system. And it's, I mean, something that a uh, simple commercial of you grabbing it, lifting it up, taking it with you to a separate room and playing, uh, that's something that you can easily show. So that's you know one of the main reasons why I'm pretty sure the marketing department of Nintendo was celebrating and they were ecstatic and they were happy because they had a product that they could easily sell. Well, uh, so, but they so. changed, they changed uh, uh, marketing departments too for this console, just to give mm -hmm. you that stuff, So that's what, yes. how serious they, they knew that they needed to be with this system. Okay. So what well, we're going to be uh, going over to the next piece of news, and this is that uh, Square Enix reveals why the Secret of Mana remake isn't coming to the Nintendo Switch. Basically, in summary, uh, you know, they made it uh, for the PlayStation 4, uh, the PC, and Vita. Uh, when they started working on the game, they didn't really know about the Switch, so they did not include the Switch on uh, the development process. Uh, and now, uh, after the game has already come out, they haven't really said that it's never going to come to the Switch. Uh, they're more so waiting on to see how much demand is out there, how many people uh, you know, they, uh, they request the game before they do decide uh, on bringing it over. So should we be looking at eventually receiving the game? What do you think, Dantes? You know, 
even though a lot of people are saying that this has been a good year for Nintendo, if there's one being if there's been one failure, aside from how they handle Boy Shad, but anyway, if there's been one failure for Nintendo this year is how late they gave their development kits to, to developers because they are missing out in a lot of more games if they would have given those de uh, development keys, uh, 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 you know, systems sooner. And Secret of Mana would have been that game because Squaresoft has been, uh, Squaresoft, you don't deserve that name, Square Enix has been supporting the Switch really, really well to clarify. So I was surprised that this game was not coming for the Switch. What is so perfect for the Switch being a Japan game, being a portable console. So I think that, that it did hurt Nintendo not sending those development kits sooner, Calionis. So that, that to me is the only mistake that they've done with the launch of the Switch, if there was a mistake. so Yeah, and I mean, uh, you can really, I mean, you, you can understand to a point uh, or to an extent why Nintendo did it. Uh, they had a really good product and they wanted to make sure that you know, it wasn't going to leak out there and somebody was going to copy them. Uh, before it came out if you want to know about what happens when you are i mean when you have another company copy you and be out there before you just look at uh fortnite where they did the battle royale uh, mode before PUBG uh you know has come out so uh that's something that if i'm, I'm not gonna i'm not sure if it's gonna if it's if it's gonna hurt the the switch at some point but uh yeah that's that's the whole reason why they did it okay Go ahead. Moving on to the next one. So next one is Ed Boon, and he discusses the possibility of bringing Injustice 2 to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, he said, yeah, I think at the end of the day, you can make almost any game uh, on the Switch. Uh, there are inevitable, inevitable compromises, but you know you can make the, you know, some version for the Switch on the Atari system. So you know, well, at, at some point, we should be expecting to come. But um, it's probably not going to be anytime soon. Uh, if once it does, uh, there will be uh, some compromises. But the game looks amazing uh, on the other systems, and it seems like the story mode on the game it is uh, something that uh, will be you know really interesting. It's really uh, you know fleshed out, and it's not Marvel vs. Capcom. So don't worry about you know that it being horrible like that. But uh, just Injustice 2 uh, should make it at some point. Hopefully it will, and if it does, I think it's it's going to do well on the Switch. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not a fighting game fan, so I wouldn't care if this game comes or not. But, I mean, the success of the Switch have all developers talking. And what I mean is that they're going to get the questions. Is this game coming to the Switch? Is this game coming to the Switch? Is this game coming to the Switch? And Doom proves that, yes, there's going to be some compromise. But you can take your game and make it to the Switch. So, we'll see. Well, and I know you're saying if it is it coming to the switch, is it coming to the switch? So one of those games that we keep saying or asking is it coming to the switch is a steep from Ubisoft. Uh, so yeah, they announced it early on when they did the uh, the whole uh, you know the reveal the uh, the presentation early in the year. That was one of the third party games that they showed on the presentations, and we keep asking when is it going to come out. So. Um, I'm not sure when exactly they did. I mean, they said again that it will be coming over to the Switch, but they still haven't specified when exactly. So we keep waiting uh, to see when it will come out. At this point, uh, since it's been this long, are you still looking forward to it? Do you think it's going to sell well on the Switch, or should they just scrap it completely and and just invest time on another one? Uh, Ubisoft has a, a good relationship with Nintendo. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if this game comes out to the Switch. We just have to wait and see. Probably Ubisoft right now is just analyzing and see if, if it's worth it. I think Ubisoft this gen is being more strategic with, this, with Nintendo and picking games that they know are going to sell really well on the, on, the, on the Switch and not just trying to port everything out of the blue, right? So I think that's what's going to happen. Ubisoft is going to analyze it and then they'll decide. Well, and yeah, uh, like I just said, um, I'm really proud of Ubisoft, uh, what they've done with the Switch. I'm also proud of you know Square Enix and what they're doing as well. They're they have been really strong uh, third-party supporters, same as you know as Bethesda as well. So uh, I'm really encouraged, and I, I think um, you know people know that Steep it is a Ubisoft game. Hopefully, when it comes out, it's not going to be a $60 game. 
but I feel like people will, I mean, there will be some people out there buying it because, uh, you know, to show appreciation to Ubisoft about how they've you know, been supporting the Switch and Nintendo. So we'll, we'll see on that one. But uh, moving on to the next one, uh, Super Beat Sports um, has been delayed on the Nintendo Switch. Originally, it, sh it was going to come out two days ago on October 12th, but uh, it's not going to arrive until later. So uh, Harmonix, uh, they did stay on their Twitter account. Looks like Village the Slugger took a little detour around a neighboring galaxy. More info about Super Beat Sports release coming soon. So uh, the game is still going to come out this year, but they delayed it. They haven't said exactly when or why exactly, you know, like the delay was made. But, but yeah, it's uh, one of those games which, which seems you know, in, interesting and at home on the Switch. So how do you feel about the delay? Uh, I don't know this game, so. <laughs> hey, it's all good. We, hey, we got enough games on the Switch to play the rest of the year, so we're good. We're covered. You can come out whenever you want. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Well, and um, so moving on, we have LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, uh, and they have confirmed that the game will be the same on the Nintendo Switch as the other platforms. Uh, so, yeah, they said... Uh, yeah, it, it is good news, and, you know, and quote... Absolutely no chances, you know, no changes will be made, and the season pass will be available in its entirety. The game will also feature split Joy-Con support throughout the game, including the arena and story mode. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just glad that they have made sure not, not to compromise the game. Uh, they will be including everything, and hopefully, uh, you know, other developers will follow suit and do the same for their games. So that that's really good news in my opinion. Honestly, uh, the uh, I would say that uh, that's what we wa waiting to see games coming out the same date as the counterparts and see how the Switch does against those games. I'm really really interested to see that more down in the future. We're gonna see the Switch power. We're gonna see if it's really uh, it's really as strong. It really has a great attach rate. But you know. Uh, comp uh, game people are gonna have to understand as the switch grows more popular the attach rate will go down that is just normal because then people have more selection there's a wide variety of tastes that you're gonna have in the console so to me now is the time to sell your switch games now is the time to <laughs> put your games uh, you know as soon as possible on the switch because again as the install base grows and as, as there's more games uh, there's gonna be more selections it's gonna be harder to sell your game yeah, and I see the uh, the PSV Xbox and Spoon are very excited about the Lego Marvel Heroes game. So I mean, good for you guys, and I mean that'll be one I'll, I'll be you know probably be picking up and playing with my kid as well. Uh, he loves Marvel characters and uh, the Switch, um, great environment you know to share with him. Yep. But um, moving along, and and this is another piece of news that is very encouraging, but it shouldn't really be surprising because they have already done this in the past, and it's that. Nintendo wants certain third-party developers to create mature game. Uh, so, you know, there was an article on the Wall Street Journal, and they, you know, were talking about how Nintendo is going out of their way to make sure that they have uh, mature games on the system. Uh, and, end quote, they said, Nintendo company is encouraging some producers of violent or risky video games to provide content for its Switch console in an attempt to shed its image as a maker of devices just for families software developers say so how encouraging is uh this to hear than this uh that's good news i mean the uh again nintendo smart they're trying to uh, uh, please, uh, uh, please everybody in the crowd everybody every gamer and it's not only about the kids like everybody keeps saying nintendo is just a kitty console it's about uh you know trying to get everybody to play the switch and doom is on the right step uh, Wolf's Time is on the right step. Uh, Skyrim is on the right step, and and many other games. Oh, La Nor, right step. So as you get more mature and mature games, that's gonna bring that crowd. And that crowd, I always hated the the uh, the. Oh, whoa, Mario is for kids. No, Mario Odyssey is gonna be one of the best games of all time, probably. Um, let me not get my head on myself. But that, then you come in, you wanna play Doom, you wanna play La Nor, but. You're, you're in there, you say, oh, let me play Mario Odyssey, it looks good. Oh, wait, Breath of the Wild. A lot of people have been talking all day, that game. Let me try it out. And then you'll be like, oh, damn, Breath of the Wild is a pretty good game. So Nintendo's being smart. They don't produce mature games. So they're trying to get other com other uh, developers to do the mature games for them. 
Yeah, and that's uh, something that you really don't have to worry about Nintendo. Like, Nintendo doesn't really want to, like, censor uh, mature games. Like, uh, did they ever censor you know, Conker's uh, Bad Fur Day uh, on the Nintendo 64? No, they did not. Did they ever censor BMX uh, or Triple X on the GameCube? No, they, they did not. Did they censor Mad World? Or did they censor No More Heroes? So those, those are games that Nintendo has, has had on their systems previously. Bayonetta. And they and they have well Bayonetta as well. So they you know they haven't censored any of those games. So it is yeah, really encouraging uh, that Nintendo's going out the other way because th this is one of those things that the only reason why they're cutting uh, Nintendo a, a kitty company is because Nintendo first party games for the most part are either for everyone or they're like T14s uh, and that's about the uh, the extent that they go. They don't make any mature games or anything like that, and that's the reason why they have been labeled. Uh, as a kitty company, but uh, yes, it, it is very encouraging because as you know, there's a lot of mature games out there that are among the best games in the world. Like you said, the other LA Noirs, the Doom, the Wolfensteins, uh, the Skyrim. So by having more and more mature games, more companies are bringing those, you know, that type of portfolio over, and more people will be enticed uh, to get a Switch because they know uh, just because it is a mature game, they don't have to worry about not having it. Uh, on the system, uh, and also I do agree with you know PSV, Xbox, uh, and Spoon Rocket League uh, is going to sell amazingly so, on the system. So, so. Uh, give a quick in intervention, you guys, if you want to have some questions for us, so we can answer after the uh, Onuma's Nintendo discussion. Go ahead and post to them, and we'll we'll answer them uh, uh, later on tonight. But yeah, go ahead, Calionis to the next news. Okay, so yeah, uh, so getting over to the next one, and we have. Crazy Justice for Switch features cross-platform play, and here's a video that they showed on the well, My Nintendo let me, News. So if you go, let me so show the baby right now. Oh. So yeah, so My Nintendo News uh, shared an article about Crazy Justice, which they will have uh, battle royale mode uh, on the on the system. It, there is going to feature cross-platform, which means that if you're on the uh, if you're on a Nintendo Switch. Uh, you will be able to play against Xbox One and PC players as well. So uh, it is very encouraging. It is a cell shaded type game. I've seen videos, uh, and I'm you know, currently reaching out to the company. I want to you know, try to do an interview with them uh, to get more details about the game, but uh, it looks really good. Uh, did, you, did you get to see the videos, Dante? and how do you feel about the game? So I'm showing it right now. Uh, it, it, again, it's a b battle royale game. Uh, you know, this is the biggest uh, genre that is coming, the up-and-coming genre, right? So Nintendo having their own Battle Royale game is going to be great. And uh, like Caliona stated on the news, you're going to have cross-platform play with Xbox and PC owners. So you're always going to find a match. You're always going to find people to play with, which is sometimes that's the harder part if the, the game doesn't become famous. I don't think it's going to be big as big as Fro Frost Knight and, and, and PUBG, but but it could have their own group. It could have their own people, their, their hardcore fan base, and having those three, uh, having cross-platform uh, play will help that. So I think this this is good. This is good. This is I think this is the real first big multiplayer game for the Switch. So it's going to be really interesting how well it will do right so hey uh we'll see i'm i'm, I'm happy I, i'm not gonna play it i'm not a big into those games but hey i'm happy for the nintendo to to have this game uh and uh and we'll see how it does we'll see how it goes so yeah um yeah just to specify the uh, the game is not only a battle royale uh game uh the battle royale mode uh game mode was added uh uh, recently, so that's on, uh, one of the announcements that they, that they already announced recently. But uh, it is a mostly a multiplayer-based game, uh, but they, it also features a single-player story. So you can play the entire storyline, and you can play a co-op. So you can uh, have another friend join you and play the entire storyline of the game. But yes, uh, it's going to have different modes, and one of those is going to be a battle royale. But yes, it will be the first battle royale game on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, also, the uh, there is a campaign uh, open right now where they already have. Uh, most of the game world, uh, well, well, basically they have the game done. Uh, they're going to be adding new content, new characters and things uh, with the uh, the campaign that they have released. I think it has like three or four more days left. But the game itself is going to be $15 if you support the campaign. Afterwards, uh, the game itself will retail for $25. So if you want to get ahead 
and get it now. It's going to be only $15 if you support the campaign, but $25 afterwards. Uh, they're trying to see if they can release it either uh, by the end of this year or early next year, quarter one, uh, 2018. So look forward to Crazy Justice and, and you know, please uh, support the campaign uh, to, so that they can have it ready, get it made and include everything that they want uh, to, you know, uh, even though it's coming out to other consoles, including PS4, but uh, PS4 won't be included on the cross platform play. Uh, and another thing about the cross, uh, cross platform play, why is cross platform play important? The reason why it's it very important is uh, let's look at a game like Lawbreakers. So, Lawbreakers, um, and this is something that they keep getting, uh, updating over at NeoGAF. Uh, a couple of days ago, it only had 10 players, 10 concurrent players on Steam. That means that only 10 players were playing the game in the world on, on Steam. What does that, does that tell you? Uh, Lawbreaker is a five on five game. So that tells you that the Q&A team. Yeah, they were making two teams. <laughs> yeah, the, the Q&A team, which is basically 10 people, they were the only ones logged in. That means nobody in the whole world was connected playing the game on Steam. The, the game is available on the PS4. Uh, we don't have information on how many players are on the PS4, but if they had cross-platform play, you will have the Steam players with the PS4 players together, and those players will be able to, you know, to find matches. By having cross-platform play for Crazy Justice, uh, you will be guaranteed a bigger pool of players, so that way, whenever you want to go online and play, you will be able to find other people to play with because you have a bigger pool uh, to get those players from. And that's why Clutch Platform Play should be available on every system. So Sony, uh, please uh, change that because your players, even though they're saying that they don't care, they actually do care and they would love to be able to play against other players from other uh, consoles and systems in the world. So uh, hopefully we'll see that change, but very excited that the Switch uh, it, you know, does have the feature available. Okay. Go ahead, Calvin, okay. for the next news. Okay, so moving on to the next one, and it says that Microsoft, uh, Microsoft says their relationship with Nintendo on Minecraft has been strong. Uh, so they, you know, they have a quote, uh, and they said, uh, we talk to Sony all the time. With Minecraft on PlayStation, we have to be one of the biggest games on the platform in terms of sales and gameplay. Same with Nintendo. The relationship with Nintendo on this front has been strong. They've been great supporters, and we continue to collaborate with them. But I think Sony's view is different, uh, and they should talk about their view. So basically, they were discussing about you know, the same thing, cross-platform plays in between the systems and why the Sony uh, PlayStation is not uh, eligible or available for those. So that's something that, that Microsoft has been fighting. Uh, Sony keeps saying no, but Nintendo embraced it completely, and the Switch will be... Uh, part of the cross platform when it comes to Minecraft. So, uh, what do you have to say about this, Nantes? Uh, more uh, <laughs> uh, question, I guess, to you, Calione. So, like, if the, a lot of people were saying, "Oh my God, Nintendo was gonna go third party and they're gonna, you know, uh, put their their games on the system." So, question that I would have is, do you believe if Nintendo went third party, would they put their games on the PlayStation or on the Xbox or on both? Okay. Uh, well, that's gonna be a tough one. I say. My the first thing that I would say is they will put it on both of them, you know, both in Microsoft or uh, uh, and Sony. So on the PlayStation and on the Xbox, they will put it on those. Uh, I still feel like they will probably just go uh, smartphone only first before doing something like that. But if they were gonna go with a specific console, like with one of them, it'll probably be with the uh, Xbox and Microsoft because uh, throughout the last couple of years, the relationship between Nintendo and Microsoft has been a strong one. Uh, and that goes back to you know some of the rare games and things like that. Uh, they're you know selling the company to them, so they they have been talking you know, uh, amongst themselves for a long time. Nintendo's relationship with Sony, um, Sony has. I mean, it's, it's, they, it's been a little hostile because, you know, Sony has taken a couple of pot shots uh, towards Nintendo and Microsoft as well. Uh, but it seems to me that Nintendo's relationship with Microsoft is a lot stronger than between Nintendo and Sony. Uh, what about you, Dantes? Uh, I, I agree. I would be Microsoft. I don't agree with what you said that, Nintendo, uh, that Sony's taking pot shots because Microsoft started taking pot shots with everybody first. But, I mean, that's your view. 
Uh, you you still hurting that the PlayStation is number one. Uh, anyway, uh, I I would say. Are counted. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I would say that uh, it would be Microsoft. I mean, Sony and Nintendo, the relationship got broken because Calionis keeps forgetting that the first one who fucked the other was Nintendo when they had a, uh, an agreement with, with Sony with their CD-based system and they, they, they behind their back went Panasonic. So, I mean, if there's still some hatred there, it's probably be Sony because, again, they were the ones who got first stop in the back. Again, Calionis doesn't remember that. But thanks to that... Uh, the PlayStation was born. The PlayStation was born, and, and it became, damn to me, the best 32-bit console, pure and simple. It, it, it was better than the N64. Right? Calionis may fight uh, that against me, but well, it, yes, I'm, I'm gonna say that you were right. It, it was the best 32-bit console because the Nintendo was not a 32-bit console. It no, was a but, no, but I'm gonna say that generation. I'm gonna say so. You, you're more clear <laughs> what I'm saying. I would say that generation, the PlayStation was the best system. Pure and simple. Uh, you know, N64 had good games, great games. Uh, one of the best games of all time. Two of the best games of all time in Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time. But it's just that the uh, PlayStation had way more games. Way more games, way more options. And it still had great, awesome, best games of all time, including Metal Gear Solid, Final Fantasy VII, uh, Xeno Gears, and games like that. So to me, it, it is what it is. I, I, I understood the backstab from Nintendo, I guess, in a sense, but it, it, it ended up well because it gave us competition, and competition is great. N Nintendo and Sony, going back and forth, has delivered great console, great gaming content. I just wish Microsoft would move a level because to me, Microsoft is behind. Again, Microsoft doesn't give me what I want. That's why I don't support them. I do have an Xbox three, uh, Xbox One S, and I bought it because of the uh, 4K Blu-ray. Because again, Sony messed up. Because they gave Sony you messed up. <laughs> Sony messed up. Sony should have put a 4K Blu-ray player on, on on the Pro. That was a mistake. I, I I still don't understand that that decision by Sony. Uh, but because of that, hey, I ended up buying that. You you can see Sony. You can mess up even your biggest fans. Uh, if you don't do the right, make the right decisions, because I'm not loyal to anyone. I'm loyal to whoever gives me what I need. So, but for every, for every year, Microsoft has never given me what I needed. Nintendo and Sony. It's always what. Well, that's why I always bought those two consoles. They always give me the games. The best exclusives are coming from both of them. And then, of course, the PC to me is great platform to really push the power of the games. But anyway, after the long rant, I'm just gonna say, yeah, Nintendo would probably uh, be more with Microsoft. Okay, well, uh, so moving along, uh, we have another success story when it comes to games and how they have been selling on the Switch. So the developers of The Flame in the Flood have stated that the game has exceeded their expectations. So, end quote, uh, there was a real buzz in the office this morning. Jason Perkins was in before me, which is uh, very rare indeed, and it was specifically due to the excitement of seeing figures. I had a number in my head, which I would be very pleased with, and it was a third over that. So uh, this is yet another game where developers have come out and stated that it has sold better uh, on the Nintendo Switch, and they are really happy with the figures on there. So for me, it's something else to be very encouraged about, and I'm glad about... I mean, I feel glad and I feel proud with Nintendo Switch owners because they have been supporting the games. They have been going out there and buying the games and not only Nintendo exclusives, but other games as well. So I'm very happy for that. Uh, yep. Uh, like I say, stated just earlier in this podcast, now, now is the time to sell your games. People are hungry with for games. The Switch, again, is a great console to take with you. So a lot of people take advantage of that and they buy a lot of games because they, when they go on road trips, they want to play different games. So this is your time. Sell them right now. Put them on your system. Now is the time to sell your game. Okay. And uh, for those people that are Excite Bike fans uh, but are still waiting for a new game to come out, uh, this is your next best alternative. And it's, uh, Square Enix has announced that Monster Energy Supercross uh, will be coming over to Nintendo Switch as well as other consoles. Uh, so basically, it's a, it's a game based on licensed uh, motocross. Uh, it's going to feature real-world motocross stadiums, at least bikes uh, from the 2017 Monster Energy MAA uh, Supercross. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, another racing game, uh, you know, similar to Excite Bike and well, something else to you know for Nintendo fans to look forward to. Yep. Uh, old school. I, I remember playing Excite Bike uh, on my NES uh, when I was a little kid, a little cute kid. I was so cute, Calionis. Uh, and uh, now... Uh, I wouldn't play that game now. <laughs> I 
it's just the same loop to do uh, around. But again, games were so simple back then. But still, this is good. Hopefully, uh, again, just just use support from Square. Uh, and uh, and uh, I think Square and this is the strongest Square Nintendo relationship in a long time after the whole Final Fantasy VII fiasco. So uh, Nintendo fans should be happy. And I I could with this relationship, I could foresee. Uh, Final Fantasy 15, at least the Pocket Edition coming out. Okay, and uh, we are actually finished with the news, but I just want to say uh, Spoon and PS We Xbox they posted two of the questions on there. So after we talk about the uh, the mark, you know, Nintendo market and the games coming out, and uh, the uh, well, the topic of the day, uh, then we'll go ahead and go back and answer those questions. So Spoon, PS We Xbox, thank you for posting the questions, and we will be addressing those. So, so take it let, away and close it out. Let's do this. So that was a lot of news, Caliones. But if I wanted to know what games are coming to our favorite mini market, what is the mini market that we should go to, Caliones? The girls mini market. Go ahead, Caliones. And this day we have nine new games coming out on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, so, you know, for games that released on October 10th, uh, where uh, Tuhuku, uh, Kabuto, Burst Battle, we had Tony Barbarian, DX, and games releasing on the 12th of October, we had Jono and the Celestial Elephants, Wolver Blade, The Flame in the Flood, Complete Edition, Square Boy vs. Bullies, Arena Edition, Neon Chrome, The King of Fighters 95, and 88 Heroes, 98 Heroes Edition. Um... I'll say like, you know, this uh, week I've been so engrossed on Splatoon 2 and playing the, you know, for this platform and getting ready that I haven't really looked back at, you know, at different games. Uh, the one that I, I'm i probably going to looking forward to the most is the, the Flame in the Flood. Uh, so for me personally, that's the game that I'm uh, I'm more, most interested in, uh, aside from like, you know, Volvo Gray, Neon Chrome. So I'll be, I'll be looking at those as well. But uh, what about you, Dantes? Uh, no games this week for me, Caliones. Uh, just counting down to October 27, baby. <laughs> okay. So, so let's it. do this. We're done with the mini market. It's still growing and growing. Uh, it's going to be a supermarket once uh, Mario Odyssey and Xenoblade Chronicles get over 90 Metacritic. That's the only way I'm going to accept it as a supermarket. Mario, I think, is a slam dunk for over 90. But Xenoblade... Uh, prediction is going to be around 85. What do you think, Caliones? What what would be the murder critic of, of Xenoblade? Just uh, just throw it out there. Uh, well, it's, that's going to be a hard one because uh, it depends on the reception and also how similar or different it is from the first one. It does have really big shoes to fill. Xenoblade Chronicles, the original game that came out on the Wii, uh, it is among your best games of all time. And it was over uh, 90 murder critic, so that's why... And it was, yeah. So I would say I would say 85. Let's put 85 for now, and we'll see what happens. Maybe. I think it's going to be an 88 at least. Uh, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's lower or higher. Uh, for me, it's um, uh, well, I'm not exactly sure, but hopefully, uh, Edge and everybody else is going to tell us it's probably going to score like a nine out of ten, eight out of ten on Edge. I don't, I don't really see it scoring a ten. If it does, amazing. But uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that well, goes. Well, but maybe Nintendo bought bought them off, right? They buy them or uh, they uh, they bought the uh, the review. But anyway, that's why I'm throwing that out there because now we're going into the ring. Now we're going one-on-one. -on -one. Me and Caliones discuss the hottest topic of the week in the Nintendo world in Onumas Nintendo discussion. And Caliones is bringing the fire. He's bringing the thunder. Caliones. Do you want it to talk in today's Onuma's Nintendo discussion? Okay, so um, what I wanted to talk about is uh, Edge's, um, Edge Magazine's uh, 10 out of 10 review of Super Mario Odyssey and Forbes' uh, reaction to it uh, and what they stated on their article. So, okay, so you know, to start, uh, Forbes Magazine I've awarded Super Mario Odyssey a 10 out of 10. Edge, uh, Edge Magazine, it, right? Edge, well, Edge, Edge, Edge Magazine. Forbes. Edge. I, I want to yeah, make sure. I've already mixed no, up. No, Forbes, no. Edge. Edge. Yeah, but uh, Edge, yeah, Edge Magazine <laughs> uh, gave uh, Super Mario Odyssey a 10 out of 10. Uh, their 20th 10 out of 10 in their history of their publication. And the second game this year on the Nintendo Switch to get a 10 after The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, so afterwards, uh, Forbes came out and they questioned 
uh, about the leakage uh, of the Edge magazine that it came out earlier leakage? than all. They were well, they, they throwing water. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, it's uh, this, this is what they said. Okay, so they said uh, Edge magazine the reviews uh, leaked earlier. It came out before all the other uh, publications, and because it leaked these early and they already had the game, this means that Nintendo actually paid them off to give Super Mario Odyssey a 10 out of 10. Uh, so then uh, Edge comes out. Accusations right there. Yep, that's really, really bad accusation, especially when it comes to Edge, uh, which is, And coming from, for uh, me, from Forbes, yeah. which is, uh, you know, it's a company. It's basically you have your writer from Forbes saying that I think Nintendo, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it quick. I think Nintendo, if it's proven wrong, which is, again, it's, I think they're just on accusations right now, Nintendo could sue. I mean, they wanted to, right? Because they could say you're, you know, affecting our credibility and stuff like that. So we'll see what happens. But go ahead, Kalyan. Let's keep going with the story. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and say this. Um, uh, when it comes to Nintendo, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about if they can sue or, you know, Edge or, or, or whoever. But, um, you know, after they said that, um, you know, a lot of people started you know, chiming in and they actually were in support of Edge and, you know, basically Forbes caught fire. So a lot of people were bashing Forbes. Uh, for their expressions and what they uh, what they said about Edge Magazine, and this is something that you have to understand. So, what format is Edge Magazine? Uh, is it online? Is it uh, printed? It is printed, right? Yeah. So, Edge Magazine is a printed magazine, mm -hmm. and uh, if you're gonna publish something that is printed, you have to do so ahead of time. For something like Super Mario Odyssey. You have to get it before everybody else because it's not something that you're just going to post online at midnight when the uh, uh, when everybody can start you know publishing and the embargo is lifted and everybody can post their reviews. Uh, Edge magazine is not like that. They print everything, they uh, publish it, they ship it, and then the retailers you know post the magazine. So for them to be able to have that game like Super Mario Odyssey, they need to get it before everybody else. Uh, and that's why they were the, one of the first ones because they are a printed magazine. And not only are they a printed magazine, they're also, to me, the most prestigious video game magazine in the world. So that's another reason why Nintendo... More than Game Informer? <laughs> I'm, I'm just uh, asking. After their, I'm, a, after I'm their, asking. I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, uh, yes. And even more so after their top 100 RPGs of all time. <laughs> so... <laughs> So yes, uh, they lost it completely on that one. But uh, yeah, um, you know, Edge, like I said, um, this is a, their 20 at number 10 in history, and they've been around for over 20 years. So you know that tells you that they are very critical of games. They just don't hand out perfect scores like that. And it just so happens that Super Mario, Super Mario Odyssey is so amazing that they believe it deserved that score. So. We already established that's one of the reasons why they receive it before everybody else because it is printed. They have to play the game, they have to review it, they have to um, you know, publish it on their magazine, and it needs to happen before everybody else because they're not an online uh, venue. Uh, they're printing, uh, and yes, uh, they use print on dead trees, like the Forbes uh, writer uh, stated, but. Another reason why they do it is because they're, they're prestigious and they, they deserve Nintendo's trust when it comes to giving the information. And another one is that, of course, if Nintendo feels so confident about their game and that they're going to get a high score like that, that they feel they, they're going to get a high score like that, then what better publication than Edge uh, to be the first one to receive it? So uh, for me, that's uh, why Forbes you know, jumped the gun. They said all those things that they never even considered those. They just said, oh, uh, because it came uh, you know, before everybody else and they gave it a 10, it must be that they paid for it. Uh, and that's completely wrong. Also, um, before I go to the next uh, one, what do you have to say about uh, Edge and Forbes? Um, let me see, Carlos. I think I'm going to let you finish the everything that you're discussing and then I'll, I'll step in. I'll say, the only thing I'm going to say is I don't think Edge got bought off by Nintendo. I think a lot of people use that in the fanboy war. It seems like uh, like every time an exclusive gets a high score, oh, Last of Us got a high score. It's because Sony bought them off. Or, oh, Breath of the Wild got a high score. Oh, it's because Nintendo bought them off. For, 
Forbes honestly sounded like uh, one of those fanboys in the comment sections instead of understanding that scores are just opinions. And even games that had high Metacritic score doesn't mean that you're going to like it personally. Myself, uh, I played Meta high, high 90 Metacritic score games that I was like, eh, it was okay. Uh, but I played, give you an example, Darksiders is low 80s, uh, high 70s, and Darksiders 1 was an awesome game, in my opinion. So, again, it's just opinions. So, uh, again, it, Forbes just sounded like a fanboy in the comment section. But go ahead, Calimus. Yeah, yeah now I'm going to share two comments made by two members of NeoGAF, uh, which also you know basically address you know, the whole uh, this whole thing. So we had 8-Bit, and he stated that opinions expressed by Forbes contributors are their own. You know, don't give him the oxygen. He's trolling for clicks and follows. So basically, he's he's not necessarily paid by Forbes directly. He's just somebody that is uh, writing his own blogs and is being featured on Forbes. So wow. yes, to some extent, Forbes is at, is at fault because they allow this person to you know to have it featured on their website. But at the same time, it's not somebody that works directly for Forbes. So they can easily say, uh, that's not our view. That was some you know contractor or somebody else uh, that said it. So they cannot be directly responsible for it. Uh, we also had Lord Osidax uh, on NeoGAF, and he said that he is jealous because Nintendo didn't send a review copy to him. By the way, contributors equals blog. That guy can be a VG Charts member, nothing to see there. So again, same thing. Uh, is not a you know person working directly for Forbes. Is somebody that you know a contributor that contributes to their website. So and once again, it's not doesn't mean that it's, it was Forbes directly that said it. But at the same time, they should be you know to some extent they should be held responsible for allowing those things to make it over there because uh, to you know people that don't know, you feel like yes, this is Forbes saying it, and Forbes is you know like one of the biggest companies in the world. So. Uh, or you know it has the most um, you know one of the most credibility when it comes to Forbes and and them. So uh, I mean I'll, I'll stop on here and I'll let you continue and I'll, I'll just continue you know, to kind of like tee off from what you say. But what else do you have to add on this? Okay, so I'm gonna give you the whole perspective of, of this. So you're right. Is if it's just a blogger, it doesn't mm -hmm. his opinions doesn't become from Forbes. Who gives a shit? Uh, it's just a, a a person saying dumb shit. Uh, now, is publishers do try to influence scores? Yes, they do. They do. EA has been caught. Uh, a lot of companies, you know, trying to influence scores, and they don't send review copies to to people who who talk bad bad about them. I mean, Jim Sterling again, another and a person. He didn't get review copy of Shadow of War and games like that because of all the you know shit he's talked about Warner Brothers which is well-deserved, in my opinion. So, Warner Bros., if we ever get to be big, I don't give a flying uh, shit if you send me a, a review copy because uh, you guys suck. Anyway, uh, what I was saying is that uh, that I think publishers do influence. So, there's, there's some truth that sometimes people do try to influence and buy reviews yes microsoft was caught one time uh it's saying that uh they're uh, sending to youtubers to promote the xbox one and 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 they didn't have to disclose that they got the xbox one from microsoft and that's where the whole fcc got involved and says no you have to disclose if you got the product from the company you have to disclose that you got it from it and, and explain that uh so microsoft has been caught doing it right uh so there's some truth to that. Now, do I believe that Edge and Nintendo tried to do something fishy? I don't think so. I think Nintendo knows. Mario games review well. Why do they need to influence anything? They're just going to be like, look, here's my game. It's going to be awesome. Review it. And, and fuck it. So it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be scenario to scenario based. I don't think it's going to be all the time. If you get a high score, it's going to be, oh my God, Sony tried to buy you or Nintendo X, Y, and C. I think you get more of a chance of third-party publishers trying to influence uh, scores. But, you know, uh, console manufacturers like Sony and Nintendo, they're, they're, they're getting money not only from their exclusives, but all the games that they sell on their console. It's not like they're dying to make sure that their game sells, right? Uh, and every, every company wants their games to sell. But Anyway, after the long winded rant, I'm just saying it is possible that uh, companies do try to influence and do try to buy reviews, 
but I don't think Nintendo did, did this time. I, I think it's just Nintendo trusts that they're going to have a great review uh, scene from Mario Odyssey. Mario Odyssey is going to get higher ni high 90s. And if and if 90% of the reviewers give Mario Odyssey a 9 or more, it just shows you that it's a good game, like Breath of the Wild. I think Breath of the Wild, as of now, is my game of the year. And even over Horizon Zero Dawn, who I thought was awesome. And Horizon Zero Dawn had, had an 89 Metacritic score, and I believe that that deserved higher. Uh, and, and, and that's just, again, that's because, again, it's opinion. It's opinion. Your reviewer is there for opinions. You, as a consumer, need to take the reviews and say, who do you trust? Who kind of applies more to your taste? And then go with that reviewer. And, and then you'll be fine. And that's it. That we, I don't I don't understand the big hoopla. Oh, my God, this game has 95 from Metacritic. Oh, my God, this game has 85. And the fanboys going back and forth and fighting. Oh, my game has an 85 or my game has a 90. Who gives a shit? Uh, Metacritic is just there as a tool for the consumer. And that's it. Is, is, is this game worth buying it? Yes or no? And even then, use Metacritic only as one of the pieces of the tool. Do Look at, 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 at trailers. Look at gameplay and say, okay, this is a game that I'm interested at because I'm, I typically like this type of games. Shouldn't, don't use Metacritic only. Use all the tools and then make your decision to buy the game. Anyway, go ahead, yeah. Calionis. And, well, uh, I guess another reason why Nintendo could say, hey, uh, Edge is going to be a good place to, you know, like, you know, give the Mario games so they can review it is because this is actually the fourth Mario game in the publication history to receive a 10 out of 10. So the first one was, and now I'll tell you each one, and you tell me if you feel like it does deserve a 10 or not, uh, Mario 64. Does it deserve a 10? Uh, yes. Uh, Super Mario Galaxy 1. Oh, yes. Super Mario Galaxy 2. Yes. And now the fourth one is uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Oh. So, yes, uh, they did skip uh, Sunshine, and they skipped uh, 3D World. So those didn't get a 10 uh, from Edge, but... You know, even though this is the fourth Mario game to receive it, the you know for me the other games actually did deserve the ten as well. So it's not something that they have like certain yeah you know, favoritism for Mario games. Is that those Mario games are among the best games ever made, and it seems like Edge Magazine thinks the same thing about Super Mario Odyssey, which is very exciting because the game comes out in two weeks, and after having Breath of the Wild and how great that game has been, after all the great games coming out. On the system, and yes, uh, Spoon, including Splatoon 2, um, we have another one to look forward to. I'm, I'm uh, doing, I'm the, doing the, season, uh, so. the Jim Sterling uh, Shadow of War uh, orc <laughs> post right now. <laughs> yeah, but, Two weeks. but yeah, but I think uh, this is, um, yeah, Forbes. Uh, they need to, you know, talk to the contributor. Maybe not even feature that person because it, it sounds more so like being a troll and trying to get clicks than anything else. They're just doing it for the clicks and they're just doing it to stir uh, controversy because you know we there, there's a lot of console warriors out there that they're going to be like pulling for their favorite consoles regardless. Instead of just appreciating games from any console, uh, I mean, don't be uh, one of those console warriors. There's so many games from so many different systems that you should not overlook. So please go out there, enjoy what the other systems have as well, because ultimately you're going to be the winner because you're going to have those great experiences I'm a uh, from all these other games. So, <laughs> so but to, yes. to close this, I'll say that me and Kalina both agree. Uh, Nintendo didn't buy anything. I think the game looks awesome, and I think you're going to see more high review scores for Mario Odyssey. Pure and simple, and this guy is just a troll and a fanboy and whatever. I mean... Hey, dude, you can just say whatever you want. It's the internet. If it was on the internet, it must be true. <laughs> anyway, let's go and answer the questions quick so we can end the show today. Q&A time, baby. Q&A. So uh, first question is, what game is going to sell the most this fall, Caliones? So Caliones, you go first. Okay, and just to be clear, uh, are we talking about all the different consoles, or are we talking about just uh, let's say the all, Nintendo? Let's say all. Let's say all. All the consoles. Uh, you know what? That's, that's going to be pretty hard. I'll say, like, okay, uh, it's not really that hard. Uh, for me, the, the game that's going to sell the most is probably going to be uh, Call of Duty World War II. I mean, World of War. Uh, World of War. World War II. I'm mixing it up with an old uh, Call of Duty game, but I think Call of Duty... Uh, will be the best-selling game. Um, also, uh, you're going to have you know, games like PUBG, 
where if it's you know, compatible with the uh, Xbox uh, One, it's going to be among among the best selling games as well. Um, and then after those, you may have a game like Star Wars Battlefront Two uh, being up there in sales. Uh, so after those, you know, big third party games, and, and PUBG is uh, not necessarily third party games. It's kind of like a, a console exclusive for the Xbox One and PC. Uh, but after those. Um, you're gonna have Super Mario Odyssey uh, selling as maybe the fourth, you know, best-selling game of the uh, of the holidays and the end of the year. So I'm gonna divide it in two. The best third-party selling exclusive is probably gonna be Call of Duty, right? That's the. But Battlefront, I can see Battlefront selling, hoping people don't buy it because he has that loot box bullshit. So guys out there. Don't buy Battlefront 2, please. You know, let's shut down this well, crap of loot boxes, please. I'll, I'll say, I'll say, uh, I'm for now. I'm no, 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 because they they did say that it was more so for cosmetics. No, 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 no. Calionis, so Calionis, no, so no, 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 no. Don't start coach. being a don't start being a corporate uh, defender. Uh, if you give them an inch, they're gonna take the whole arm down to loot boxes. No to loot boxes. So don't buy that crap. So don't don't break Calionis. Don't be don't be a, a corporate bitch. Okay, let me clarify that. Anyway, uh, it's, it's Star Wars. Don't give a shit if it's if I I said it. I'm hoping Last of Us don't have this crap because if not, I'm gonna be start crying because Last of Us well, it's, it's one of my games that I want. I'm just saying it because yesterday I did pre-order the tickets for uh, the Last Jedi. Oh, you can uh, so you can be... watch the movie all you want, dude. But <laughs> but the game, hey hey. Uh, fuck the game. Let me. I'm trying to be PG. Fuck the game. Okay. Uh, uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, is uh, uh, what do you think about Odyssey? Will it be as good as Platoon 2? As bad as Arms? No. I mean, Odyssey is gonna be better than those two games by a mile, in my opinion. But you know, again, I'm a huge Mario fan, so so I, I'm not a fan of, of ARMS and I'm not a fan of Splatoon. Kalionis maybe could go, well, he's gonna say, well, multiplayer, of course, uh, Splatoon is awesome, but Mario Odyssey single player experience is gonna be, is where it's at, right? So uh, it's just two different games, but I would say Mario Odyssey will have the highest Metacritic score compared to Splatoon 2 and ARMS. What do you think, yeah, I'm, Well, I'm gonna say that, well, I wouldn't call uh, ARMS a bad game, Arms is a game like you know, much like the the original Splatoon, where uh, it was a little bare bones, but it's getting more modes, more weapons, more characters. So it's it's still in the process of growing. Uh, it's probably going to be one of those games that you can't really judge until like a year from now, uh, when you look back and see everything that it has. Uh, so it is a, a work in progress uh, and something that uh, may not be worthwhile for people right now, but it probably will be eventually. It's still. Uh, a good fighting game is really fun to play, especially when you play with the split joy cons and you're throwing punches and things like that. So I've had a great time playing with my son, uh, both of us together. So that's something that you probably, if you don't enjoy the game, uh, but you haven't played it with somebody else, uh, you probably need to get somebody else in your room and play together. So you get the best experience out of it. Uh, Splatoon 2, I love the game. I worship the game. I play it as much as I can. Uh, and you can see it on my channel. Every time we do the streaming Wednesdays, and you know, like tonight and uh, yesterday, it's all all about Splatoon 2. So, uh, of course, my Mario Odyssey uh, multiplayer experience is not going to compare to Splatoon 2 because Super Mario Odyssey is a single player game. Even though there's like certain mini games that you can do uh, to be among the uh, uh, on the leaderboard when it comes to you know the entire world, but it's not a multiplayer game. So. So you can't really, uh, you, you know, put them together, but still, um, as a as a game experience in total package, uh, I believe Super Mario Odyssey uh, will be better than Splatoon 2, Arms, and maybe Breath of the Wild. So you know, who knows? Uh, that that one uh, we won't know until the game comes out. But I can probably safely say that uh, right now that I do believe will be better than Splatoon 2 and ARMS. Okay, cool. And the last question of the evening, so we can end this show in style, is what old Nintendo IP would you like to see? I'm guessing come, in, come back. Uh, hmm, that's a good question. I wouldn't call it old, but I wouldn't mind seeing um, uh, a Luigi's Mansion on the Switch. 
I love the Luigi's Mansion game on the 3DS. That was really a fun game. I was I was hooked with that game for easily a month and a half. And even uh, playing the multiplayer, you know, it was it was a fun game. I love playing Luigi's Mansion. So uh, again, it's not an old IP because that game came out like three years ago or so or four. I, no, I think it's even more. Wow, I don't remember. That's been a long time. I would say uh, Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, I would love to see a Luigi's Mansion on the on the uh, on the Switch. You, Calionis? Well. Uh... I mean, thinking, thinking about the Switch and what games we've you know, like received uh, lately and which ones we haven't, uh, I want to see what they can do now uh, with the Switch and, and Pilot Wings. So, I, I mean, I really want Nintendo to you know, take another dive with Pilot Wings and see what they can do with that one. Uh, I mean, aside from those, I would love to see like, you know, 1080 snowboarding or NBA course side or, I mean, even games like... I'll say like, well, I mean, F zero. <laughs> well, F zero. Uh, I believe is the easiest thing to do is just make a remake of GX and and that that's in call of the day. So, <laughs> or just have the uh, the fast RMX team and and do uh, a base a game based on the F F zero uh, franchise. But uh, you know, for me, I think Pilot Wings is going to be the one that I would like to see, and I I would also like to see a real successor to uh you know super mario rpg um they need to make a sequel to that one and i know that there's uh they're starting a kickstarter to try to make a sequel uh so that's not going to go anywhere yeah. uh, so I don't, I don't even know what they're trying but um i mean i would put pilot wings uh i would put you know the 1080s oh wave race uh, wave race is another one that i would like to see on uh, nintendo you know try to tackle again uh, but yeah it's a uh, pilot wing would probably be my number one game uh, that I would like to see again. Okay, with that, we're done, Caliones. Let's put a little bit of outro music. Yeah, I love that Xenoblade music. Oh, it's so awesome. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for joining us at the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast episode 19 every Monday, uh, Monday, <laughs> every Saturday. <laughs> At 9.30 Eastern Time. I apologize. I'm still, still getting used to the new schedule. Of course, remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make these two crazy MFs happy. Also, if you don't want to see your ugly face, it's all good. I got a solution for you. Go to SoundCloud and iTunes and download this podcast for free. Rate us over there so you can show us some love. Also, we do have a small Facebook page at Forcing Unison Gaming. Also, if you go down to the description box below, you can see the full channel schedule. On Monday, we got a random video. On Wednesday, we got streaming Wednesday at 9.30 Eastern Time. On Tuesday, we got the Forcing Unison live, 9.30 again Eastern Time. And Saturdays, of course, we got this show. Every information on the description box below. And finally, and on this says finally, Go to ChigueroSNews.com and give some click and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, thank you for guys for joining us. Long live Nintendo. See you guys. Have a great one, everyone. Now it's finally working. Sorry, I was trying to show the uh, the uh, thanks for watching and subscribe. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>